Hello there and welcome to the last show in this series of Top 10 Bikes and what a special show we have in store for you. I'm Louise Brady and for the past 10 weeks, along with my fellow panellists, I've been picking out my favourite bikes of last year, covering everything from super sports to learn illegals, scoring each bike for its street cred, build quality, performance, comfort and value, we've created the definitive Top 10 countdown of the bikes from 2003. So, without further ado, let's find out if you agreed with the Men and Motors panel. In our first show, we took a long, hard look at super sports bikes. These are the direct descendants of those mad, bad two-wheel beasts ridden by biking gods such as Neil Hodgson, Carl Fogarty and Valentino Rossi. Super sports have given up all pretensions of practicality and comfort in the cause of outright performance and handling, making you feel like a biking superstar. But which one did we, the panel, decide had the most star quality? Well, after much consideration, we unanimously agreed that the Suzuki GSX R1000 should take the top spot in our countdown, with an overall score of 87%. Now, it didn't have things all its own way. It was pushed hard by last year's winner, the Honda Fireblade, with only 11% between 10th and 1st place showing the quality of our contenders. You, the viewers, disagreed with the panel's choice of second place bike, but we were in full agreement when it came to the winner. So let's hear it for the universally acclaimed GSX R1000. The GSX R1000, I think it won because it is the king of the super sports bikes, and it's going to have a harder time this year, but for this year it was the winner. Awesome package, plenty of power, pretty good handling, um, definitely uh, a good bike for the 2004 might have its uh, work cut out um, in the future with new ZX10, but a fabulous bike all the same. It's getting challenged again this year now. Um, big competition up again, so yeah, might hold it this year. Hope so. I would rate that myself as the first bike. Um, it's a good all-round sports bike. Great for track days, great for road use. So after the first category, we find both the panel and the viewing public agreeing. So let's see how long this can last. Our next show featured street and naked bikes. This category had an undisputed winner and its nearest rivals were the Kawasaki Z1000 in second and in third, the Yamaha Phase 1000. So, what bike managed to make these feel pedestrian by comparison? Well, it's none other than the Aprilia Tuono, the bike that's mad as a box of frogs. A very credible score of 86% meant the Tuono rode away with the street and naked title. It had a handy 3% lead over the Kawasaki Z1000 in second place. When it comes to styling, there ain't much out there to match the Tuono. Its combination of street fighter looks and user-friendly riding position work well to make a bike that can be ridden long and hard. So how did this bike rate with you, the viewers? This time, you didn't quite see eye to eye with the panel. In fact, you were looking at something completely different and voted the Tuono in sixth place. Your bike of choice in this category was the Kawasaki Z1000, so let's see why. It's quite a fun bike, it's quite very nippy. Um, I've, I know quite a few ladies that have got them, they're probably quite, quite good for lady riders as well. Bit of a stranger to the market this year, um, again, quite uh, revolutionary in its looks. Um, again, a good package all round and a nice bit of fun. Yeah, Kawasaki Z1000. Um, I used to have the Z900 myself. In fact, I've still got one in the garage and I think it's a pretty worthy successor. For me, it would have been the Tuono um, 1000 again. Um, big setup and big riding style. Lovely power delivery. Um, nice smooth engine. Um, that would have been my street naked bike of the year for definite. Show 3 saw us concentrating our attention on a category that's slowly becoming very popular worldwide. Whilst it may be a growing area, these bikes still have a limited appeal to us sports bike loving Brits, it's dual purpose bikes. This category features the more unusual areas of biking such as monster trailers, supermotos and enduros, so unusual looks and big seat heights reign supreme. With bikes from eight different manufacturers in our top ten, there's plenty to choose from. And in the end, our winner took the title with ease. This year's best dual-purpose bike is BMW's R1150 GS. This gigantic Tourer come off-roader has earned itself a reputation to die for, and our panellists obviously felt this bike was a worthy winner, as it won by a healthy 8% margin. 
The BMW is a great bike, and I agree it should be the winner because this bike will take all the abuse you can dish out of it. Not the best looking bike by far, but very robust and easy to live with. If you go to work through the week on this, then blast down your favourite bay roads on a weekend. Buy a set of hard luggage for it, and it will get you around Europe with ease. And with the shaft drive, there's less maintenance for you to worry about on long journeys. BMW, fantastic name, so it should have plenty of reliability, should go forever uh, with minimum maintenance. Um, superb bike, uh, I, know, I should imagine it'll do very well. The BMW um, the 1150GS, good bike. When I speak to people on the ferry, they thoroughly recommended it, and they've done thousands of miles. Yeah, can't beat the liability of BMWs, but um, I think for me it's stuff to be the KTM Duke. It's a new sort of super moto and yeah, sort of thing I'd like to have a go on. Our next category is a toughly fought area filled with purpose-built machines, but it's also the dumping ground for many a sports bike that's reached the end of its initial career, such as Yamaha's Thunder Race and Kawasaki's ZX9R. Known as the Sports Taurus, these bikes are made to go miles and miles, but allow plenty of smiles when you get there. Last year's winner was the Honda VFR 800i VTEC. To many, this is still the best port store, but this year it only came third. Second place went to Suzuki's Hayabusa, which in turn was just pipped to the post by Honda's Blackbird. This high-performance missile has all the great attributes a great bike needs, such as handling, looks and bucket loads of performance. However, to be a top sports tourer takes more than this, so the bike has the comfort and practicality to match. Although it's been around for over five years now, it still cuts the mustard for many people. But you, our viewers, plump for the Hayabusa ahead of the Blackbird, so let's see why. Suzuki Hayabusa always has a, a good claim to top-end speed. Um, it's surprisingly very easy to handle around, although it looks big in size. Probably a little bit dated and not to most people's taste with its looks. The Suzuki Hayabusa would have to be the winner because it is the fastest bike in the category and it's just an absolute flying machine. I think it's going to have its work cut out in the next year or so with some of the bikes that are coming online, but for this year again, it is the absolute winner. Suzuki Hayabusa, it's been around for a few years, but it's a capable bike and yeah, I think it probably deserves it. I'd go with Honda VFR 800i, um, smooth, um, reliable and everything that uh, I'd need. Show 5 was all about those bikes we know we should ride for financial reasons, but don't for performance reasons. Yes, it's those insurance-friendly bikes. Last year's winner was the Suzuki SV650 that won by a considerable margin, but this year's competition was a lot closer, with Suzuki's Bandit in third place, giving our second place bike, Ducati's Monster 620, a good run for its money. In turn, the monster was hot on the tails of our eventual winner, so have you guessed what our number one was? Well, this year's winner was Suzuki's SV650. Our panel felt that this bike's abundance of practicality and reliability, allied to its low insurance rating, made it the obvious winner. The SV650 also manages to have a touch of performance up its sleeve and ridden hard can scare a few sports bike riders if they aren't paying attention. But when it comes to our viewers' choice, guess what? You agree the SV650 tops your chart as well. Now, there are many SV650 owners out there, and with the new model now available, I'm sure there'll be plenty more. It makes an ideal first bike, and is more suited to those of us who aren't as long in the leg department as we might like. The SV650 is a bike that appeals to new riders, as the insurance is the second biggest thing to pay out for after the bike itself. The V-twin motor is friendly, a non-daunting one to ride, and has enough power to scare the novices and keep the more experienced ones happy if they wish to downsize their bike. Sharp handling and great looks add to the bike's appeal. With the option of the half fairing or the naked look, you can choose which style you want. Fabulous bike. Um, really, really good bike. Uh, great for women as well for men. Plenty of power delivery and some great low-down grunt as well. The Group 11 insurance, uh, nice and cheap. Keeps up with most of the inline fours, same as like, like the Phaser 600 and the Bandits and stuff. Um, just a nice punchy V-twin motor again. Good bike, but personally I'd have gone for the Ducati 620. It's the first bike that introduced me to Ducatis and I've got a bit of a soft spot for them really. We're nearly at the end of the first part of this, your top 10 bikes rundown. But before we take a break, there's just about enough time to take a look at our next category, it's muscle bikes. 
These bikes take us back in time with retro styling, naked engines, no fearing and more power than you can shake a stick at. Last year's winner, the Kawasaki ZRX 1200, uses its blend of retro styling with modern day handling and performance to good effect. In fact, to such good effect that it's once again at the head of our muscle-bound pack. The ZRX 1200 just pipped Honda's CB1300 into second place, which was closely followed by Yamaha's XJR 1300. Although you agreed with the panel about the top place bike, you felt there was a lack of Suzuki's in the top three and put their Bandit 1200 in third place, just behind the GSX 1400. So let's see why you chose the ZRX 1200 to take pole position. Gained quite a good workhorse. Um, not been on one myself personally, but looks wise and for what it's designed for, pretty much up to the job. Fantastic bike, well designed, well put together, uh, good all round package. It's a good bike. Again, it's not really my scene on it, like retro style and all that stuff. Uh, good choice, it's a good bike, good reputation, yeah, like it. Kawasaki have got a good pedigree in this category, I think, um, but I'd, I would have liked to have seen a Ducati somewhere up there. I think the Monster deserves a mention. That's just about it for part one of our viewers' top ten bikes special. Make sure you join us after the break when I'll be running down our final four categories and unveiling what bikes you placed at the top of the tree. See you soon. Hello there, I'm Louise Brady and welcome back to part two of this, your top ten bikes viewers special. So far on the show, we've discovered that despite our years of hard work, travelling the world and testing bikes, you haven't always agreed with our expert opinion. In fact, in two of the six categories so far, you've picked an alternative top bike. So, will this trend continue? Well, there's only one way to find out. Our next category, cruisers appeared in show seven and it was no surprise to see the Honda Valkyrie F6C sitting top of the tree once again with 85%. This bike can justifiably be called a performance cruiser as its 1520cc engine gives this bike 100 brake horsepower and a top speed of 140 miles an hour. But when you consider that it weighs 309 kilos and has limited ground clearance, you won't want to be taking sports bikes on down your favorite A roads. This countdown was a close run category with the Harley V-Rod running strongly in second place, whilst bringing up the rear in third place with Yamaha's XV1700 Warrior. So, did you at home agree with our panel? No, you did not. In third, you placed Honda's VTX 1800. In second, Harley's Dyna Superglide and your top bike was the Harley Davidson V-Rod. Obviously, you all feel the best cruisers to have are Harley, so let's find out why. Got plenty of style, plenty of torque. Looks the part, absolutely fantastic bike, well deserving to win the uh, category. The Harley V-Rod is a great bike and I agree because it just looks so good. It is the outright winner of this category. The laid back riding style and the noise of the thumping V-Twin makes it a great bike for leisure cruises down the dual carriageway or the B-Roads. This bike is not about screaming down back lanes with an uncomfortable hunch. It's about laid back, head turning, relaxing riding. Harley Davidson V-Rod, it's an impressive bike. Not really my thing, but you've got to admit, they do open your eyes whenever you see one. I would have probably went for something along the line of like the VTX 1800 Honda. Um, I wouldn't have went for any of the Harley Davidsons. The Harley Davidsons are overpriced American metal, shall we say. Right, on to our next category, which bought us Taurus? You'll find everything from bikes that hold pretensions of being sporty to fully dressed tourers that can take you and your pillion across continents without buying an eyelid. The panel's top tourer in show eight was Honda's Goldwing. The Goldwing is possibly the best long distance bike you can buy. It comes fully equipped with hard luggage, adjustable suspension, protective fairing, and most importantly, a stereo system that will glide you across Europe in comfort, listening to all your favorite tunes. Close behind the wing was Honda's other mega tour at the Pan-European, which in turn was just ahead of BMW's R1150RT. But did you agree with us? Well, in a word, no. Your final countdown went as follows. In third was the Yamaha FJR1300. In second, Honda's Goldwing. And your top spot went to the Honda Pan-European. Now, the Pan is a great bike and will allow you to cover huge distances in comfort, but it's not a wing. It has a more sporty nature and will allow you to hustle down back roads in style with your pillion and luggage safely attached, but you'll be missing the experience that is the Goldwing. 
Riding a wing is like sitting in an armchair in your living room, listening to your favourite CDs, but with a crash helmet on. And by the time the CD finishes, hopefully you're in Paris. The Pan may be the sportier bike, but let's see why you gave it the star billing. The Pan European. This is the bike that spawned the class and it's still the bike to be beaten. The Pan European is a great bike and I agree due to the fact that for long distance touring there isn't a better proved bike for the job. Any bike that services use is a good indicator of the bike's ability. With comfort and protection from the elements provided by the excellent fairing and adjustable screen, this is a bike that you can travel the world and not just Europe as the name suggests. Uh, Pan European, yes, I would rate that as first place. Um, again, it's been around for years. You can clock a lot of miles. Uh, it's always been a good bike. Honda, again, I mean, they're top anyway. Tourers, um, I'd, I'd go for the Yamaha um, FGR 1300. Uh, I think um, as an all-round package for touring, it's got the comfort um, with the luggage. It's, it's, it, it, it gives you all that travelling that you can do with, uh, with, a, with a great deal of ease. This next category takes a look at possibly the least glamorous area of biking. Yes, it's those learner legal bikes. OK, maybe not the most exciting bikes in the world, but we've all been there at one time or another. Picking a winner from a list that included two scooters, two fifties and a hatful of 125s wasn't going to be easy. But three bikes just rose to the surface like the cream on your milk. In third, we saw Honda's NSR 125R narrowly being beaten by our second place bike, the Aprilia RS125. So, can you guess what's in the top spot? Top of our chart was the Aprilia Tuono 125. Our panel felt that the Tuono 125 had what it takes to be top dog, and this bike won with a healthy 7% margin. But did you agree? Your top bike was the Aprilia RS125, with Honda's NSR 125R in second, and our winner, the Tuono, came home in third. Let's find out why. It's got all the style anybody could ask for. It really looks the part. Superbly designed bike. Uh, and I should imagine every 17, 18-year-old uh, just about to take their CBT will be dreaming of this. A uh, youngster's favourite. Uh, again, a great bike to ride around on and get your feet in the sports bike world. I think with the racing pedigree, probably the Aprilia in the 125 would be the one I'd go for. So I'd have to go with the RS125, the Aprilia. Um, a great thing, it uh, helps back to my youth. Um, that's, that's the only reason I'd choose it over the others. Our final category in show 10 looked at the biggest area of biking in the UK today, the middleweights. The panel had the unenviable task of picking a winner from a list containing such luminaries as the R6, the GSX R600, ZX6R749 and a certain CBR600RR. Despite having such a fantastic list to choose from, in the words of the Highlander, there can only be one. And the unanimous choice of both the panel and you at home was the Honda CVR600RR. This bike has taken the 600 class that bit further than its rivals and making it look like Valentino Rossi's GP winning RC211V was just the icing on the cake. This bike has character, handling, reliability and most importantly in this class performance to spare. This bike not only looks like Rossi's GP bike, but it feels as if it handles like it as well. So it's over to you, the viewers, to tell us why you liked it so much. Nice middleweight bike, can't go wrong with it. It's got plenty of heritage, plenty of breeding through the Fireblade. Um, what more can you want out of a smaller bike? Fabulous bike, great all-round package. If you want to go out and go scratching with your knee, adequate for that. Same down the town, just running around, good all-round bike. I'd have to go with the new CBR 600 RR, um, superb sports bike, handling is, is excellent, uh, as well as a good looker. It's been a successful bike, comes from a good pedigree, this one really seems to have got everybody excited and um, can't wait to see what the new Fireblade is going to be like. So there we have it, your top 10 bikes of the year. Although you didn't agree with all of the panel's choices, you did agree on at least half of them. It just goes to show that picking your favourite bike is a very personal thing. But just before we go, let's run down the number ones of our top 10 bike categories for 2003. Up first was Super Sports. Top marks went to Suzuki's GSX-R1000. And you agreed with our panel that this bike really puts the Super into Super Sports. Next was the Aprilia Tuono, taking our panellists by storm. Sadly, you didn't agree, giving your votes instead to the Z1000. 
Dual purpose bikes came next and both you, the viewers and our panel agreed. Top dog was the legendary R1150 GS. This bike has it all, looks, presence and above all ability. It'll take you to the shops and back but also allow you to go via the Sahara Desert just for fun. Suzuki's Hayabusa only came second in the panellists' top 10, but you felt it was worthy of being placed higher, making it your top sports tourer. Insurance-friendly bikes brought us all back into agreement again, with Suzuki's SV650 taking the honours. Its great combination of styling and performance, backed up by a low insurance group, was too good for us to ignore. We all agreed with the top muscle bike of 2003. Kawasaki's ZRX 1200 had just that bit more brutish power than its rivals could manage. Our next category saw the biggest disagreement in this year's top 10. We, the panel, gave the honours to Honda's Valkyrie F6C. You, the viewers, felt differently and gave your top spot to the Harley Davidson V Rod. Style over reliability was obviously more important to you. Honda's classic Goldwing won our voting in the Taurus category, but once again, you saw it differently. Your top Tora prize went still to Honda, but the Pan-European. Learn Illegal Bikes came next, and guess what? We didn't agree. Our winner was the Aprilia 200125, but you felt it was only good enough for third place and made the Aprilia RS125 your winner. Finally, the middleweights. There are many renowned middleweight bikes, such as the R6, ZX6R and 749. However, there's only one bike that can truly be called great by the panel and you. That is, the Honda CBR600RR. There you go. Although the panel and I thought long and hard over this year's top 10, it seems that even we aren't right all the time. Unfortunately, that's it for this series of top 10 bikes, but don't worry, as we'll be back later in the year to see if any of the new bikes in 2004 can overthrow this series winners. We'll see you then.